Hello and welcome to this, the final session of the CBA's Forging a Bear's Head. This video picks up from the last where we just completed cutting for the teeth. In this last session we'll look at closing the mouth, creating the nose and then finish with the eyes. To close the mouth you're going to need the general handheld fuller. Let's have a look at a video of that. A particular note to me is the hinge right here at the base of the, the jaw. So at some stage <coughs> I want you to cover that with the fuller. Can you see how I'm creating a little step here? That step needs to go away. I want a nice curve. So you're going to have to put your fuller somewhere along that line and just knock that little step in. Let's have a look at the finished result in a minute. Work from both sides of the jaw because it's easier to push the jaw off to one side of the head than the other. I definitely want you to make sure that you've got a nice sweeping curve there. Uh, try and get rid of that step. So the other thing we've got to do now is make the nose, or what I'm going to call the nose. And a bear has a strong sense of smell. And as such, the nose dominates that snout area. We're going to use three tool, tools for the nose. We're going to use the 5 8 curved chisel, which we use to make the tongue. I've got something that will be maybe quarter inch ID. Uh, that will be used to flare the nostrils. And then we're going to use the side set. Let's have a look at the video of it in process. I don't need much of a heat. First thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is just isolate the material that will be the, the nose. And I want to say it's going to be 80% of what is the front of the, uh, the snout there. It's not all of it, but it's certainly most of it. Come along, change the angle of your cutting tool, just so you can create a nice um, circle there, which is going to be the nose. Once you've got the nose established, we're going to come back in with a side step and we're going to remove everything to the side of the nose, pushing all that material back, making the nose stand out, making it proud. Here's the side set. The beauty of using the side set is when we start to cut for the actual nostrils, um, we're not cutting into that material of the snout. So pushing it out of the way now actually helps us a little later with the process. This is just a repeat of what you've already seen, just a different angle. <clears throat> I want you to note that we are most of the snout, but not all of the snout. And here we are cutting for the nostrils and you notice that moving the material away for the snout gives you room to get that quarter inch ID chisel in to just sort of flare the nostrils a little bit. So 
So the other thing that goes along with the nose is the bear has a bit of a split lip right underneath the nose. So we're going to come in here with a chisel, just create a little mark and then we're going to use the side set again just to push the material back either side of that um, just to make it read right. And that's me just finishing off, making sure I've got everything tucked away. And that's done. Next is the eyes. And a lot of expression comes from the eyes, and in particular the eyebrows. Here are two different heads, each with a different expression. And you'll notice this one on the right, has a, with that angular brow, has a much more sinister look to it than the sort of general curve than the bear on the, the left there. So let's have the tools required. <clears throat> We're going to use the general fuller. And then I have a ball tool, that's about a quarter inch OD. And then I have the eye socket tool, which is about a quarter inch ID. I actually use this OD tool, the ball tool, to help shape this eye socket tool. So the first thing we're going to do with the bear's head is we're going to use this ball and we're just going to clean up, if you like, the eye socket. Let's have a look at the video. Don't, don't do much, but just clean up any rag or anything nasty in the eye socket on both sides. Smooth out any lumps and bumps. And then we're going to take the eye um, tool, the actual eye tool, and I'm going to scallop for this. Notice how I'm doing this in a circular motion. And I'm just trying to pull material into that eye. I'm not just driving it home, I'm just trying to scallop the material and scoop material into the eye. I'm using my fuller and all I'm doing now is getting rid of those hard lines at the top of the cheek. And I do this at a fairly low heat. This is your opportunity to get rid of any sort of harsh lines you don't like, add a little bit of texture, whatever it is you think your bear's head needs. This is a different view of the same process. You can just clean up the front of the eye socket, reaching for the eye tool, and we're just going to scallop for the eye. <clears throat> now a carnivore has its eyes pointing forwards. A herbivore, such as a deer, etc., is going to have the eyes more on the side so they can see back a little bit and see if they're under attack. So make sure you get these eyes in the right place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this eyebrow and I'm going to just basically <clears throat> make some form of curve here whether you want to make a, a sinister bear with a good angle or whether you just want a general curve. I just want a general curve with my bear so I'm probably going to start here and just move right down that brow. Notice I'm not right on the edge, but I'm just slightly back from the edge. Just pushing that material down. And then I'm just going to get rid of any harsh lines there. That was that last move. This 
see how I'm just slightly behind the edge. down a little bit at the front of the eye make him a little less sleepy looking Just a different view of the same move and I'm wanting to come here I think and just put a little blow in there just to close that a little bit. And that's your bear's head finished. The rest of it is just details. Clean up and then whatever you're going to do to it to apply it. Whether you just cut it off and weld it on or whether you're going to draw out the rest of the bar and make something else. So the next few videos are going to focus uh, on the tooling with Victoria Ritter and John Williams leading you through the tooling and how to make it. And then the last session is going to be with Daryl Nelson as an interview. <clears throat> And I recommend you listen to that because Daryl, whilst he's done a lot with the bear's head, is so much more than bear's heads or animal heads. He's uh, quite an accomplished smith. So now that you've got your bear's head, you can use the same tooling to create many different uh, styles of heads. With the wolf at the bottom, I didn't use the curved chisel to cut for the jaw, but I did use that same chisel to cut for the ears. One side actually got in here and shaped the ears with the fuller. As a side note, if you're involved with the CBA blacksmithing curriculum, if you can make the bear's head, then you can make the swages for the welded collars of the level 3 grill. And of course the other way around. If you can make the swages, then you can make the bear's head. This concludes the first of the three sessions of the bear's head, which looked at the forgings of the actual bear's head. Look for Victoria and John's presentation on forging the tooling required to make the bear's head. And then the last sessions will be an interview with Daryl Nelson, who actually pioneered this style of forging. I look forward to seeing you at a future CBA event. Take care in the interim. Bye-bye.